Hello friends, millions of tens of millions of each species have been seriously affecting the Australian ecosystem. So how are Australian farmers dealing with these invasive species? Here is the video. Please click the like button if you enjoyed the beginning of the video so far. Australia is the sixth largest continent in the world. Made up mainly by mountains, deserts, and grasslands, the climate is arid, with low rainfall suitable for camels, kangaroos, and foxes to grow. In particular decades, the camel population reached 2,000 animals because there are no natural enemies in Australia. The camel population has grown strongly to 1.2 million over the past 100 years or so. The number of camels in Australia has increased rapidly, approximately 60-fold according to estimates. However, this increase also comes with a range of problems and negative impacts on the Australian ecosystem. They compete with native animals such as kangaroos for food and water, leading to significant declines in the numbers of these native species. Furthermore, camels also have the potential to harm the environment through the destruction of vegetation and water pollution. These issues requires careful management to maintain ecological balance and protect Australia's biodiversity. In 1988, the Australian government made the important decision to allow camel hunting for this first time, a decision that marked the change in policy for managing this animal population. Previously, camels were considered national property and hunting was prohibited. The rapid increase in camel numbers, however, has forced the government to adjust policies to control the situation. The Australian government has established a series of strict regulations on hunting camels, including allowing only licensed hunters, requiring humane hunting methods, and requiring hunters to report reports of the numbers of camels hunted to the government. These measures help playing an important role in controlling the camel population. And it is estimated that camel number in Australia have declined by about 30% since the government introduced the hunting program. Currently, the Australian government continues to implement a large-scale camel hunting program carried out by professional hunting teams in using helicopters to increase efficiency as this is a drastic effort to maintain balance in the camel population and protect Australians' natural resources. Fox populations in Australia have experienced a dramatic growth in recent years, with an estimated 10 million foxes now existing in the country, especially concentrated in agricultural areas and urban areas in the east and south. Human influence has played an important role in the development of fox populations in Australia. Foxes are omnivores, performing their hunting movements at night, where they can easily access their prey. Not only do they attack native animals such as rabbits, birds, and rodents, but they also pose a threat to domestic animals such as cattle, chickens, and other poultry. Up to now, each year, about 2 million cattle in Australia fall victim to fox attacks, causing a huge loss to the agricultural industry with an estimated $100 million per year.
Fox hunting is an activity that can be done both during the day and at night. For foxes, their activity habits mainly take place in the evening, so night hunting often brings higher efficiency. However, there are many areas where many foxes are active mainly during the day, which creates opportunities for exciting hunting matches at this time. Fall and winter are considered the most ideal times to carry out fox hunting. At this time, foxes are in the stage of breeding and taking care of their children, making them more active and easier to see. Each year, Australia records a large number of foxes being hunted, with an estimated number of up to 2 million. The kangaroo population in Australia has grown strongly, with about 26 million animals mainly concentrated in the grassland and deserted areas of central and northern Australia. They can cause damage to native animals, agriculture and infrastructure, especially in grassland and desert areas of central and northern Australia. While they bring unique features to the ecosystem, such as the ability to jump up to 30 feet, they also create pressure in both farmers and natural habitats. The situation is raising many issues about environmental protection and ecological balance. To tackle the problem, careful consideration needs to be given to how kangaroo populations are managed and controlled, while ensuring full consideration of the impact of the local environment and economy. The Australian government has established an animal quota for kangaroo hunting. While the goal of controlling their population, this quota is determined based on an assessment of the number of kangaroo that needs to be caught to maintain balance in the environment. Licensed hunters are the ones who do the kangaroo hunting, and they must adhere to humane hunting methods. This ensures that hunting takes place responsibly and preserves the natural balance. On the other hand, they are placed in protected areas, often in remote and inaccessible lands. Tourists often visit kangaroo sanctuaries to experience observing them in their natural habitat. According to a 2022 study, kangaroo tourism in Australia accounts for $100 million annually. This proves that the combination of environmental conservation and ecotourism not only helps maintain population balance, but also brings economic benefits to the community and the country. Do you know why Australians do not eat invasive kangaroo meat? Watch more of the video to know exactly why. First, it is important to understand that goose hunting is considered a means of controlling goose populations. And second, it is also considered an effective means of protecting crops. Geese often migrate to agricultural areas to forage and they can cause extensive damage to crops and agricultural infrastructure as well. A study by Purdue University indicates that goose can consume significant amounts of food each day and are capable of causing damage to various crops. They can also dirty roads and other infrastructure. The latter continues to be underpinned by studies and estimates from key agencies. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, goose hunting has played a significant role and reducing Canada goose numbers in the United States, from a peak of 10 million to about 7 million in 2014. Mm -hmm. 
research by Ohio State University, also points out that goose hunting can reduce crop damage by about 40%, depending on the region of the United States. Geese migrate differently, such as Canada geese in the Midwest, snow geese in the East, and gray geese in the South. Goose hunting plays an important role in controlling goose populations and preventing them from damaging crops in specific geographical areas. Goose hunting is not only a holdover from America's historical past, but also an important part of the modern rural life. Hundreds of years ago, during the colonial period, goose hunting was not only a means of providing food for farmers and families, but also a special art of survival. Today, despite many changes in purpose and methods, goose hunting still retains its appeal in many agricultural areas of the United States. Many farmers consider goose hunting not only a common hunting activity, but also a way for them to have fun and enjoy nature. Goose hunting requires patience and skills. Hunters must be people who clearly understand the behavior of geese, from choosing a suitable ambush location to how skillfully approach the target. When the shot hits, harvesting and transporting the geese becomes an important part, requiring safety and respect for the animals. This is often considered a family activity, an opportunity for members to participate together and create memorable memories. In addition, goose hunting also provides many educational benefits. Children have the opportunity to learn about nature and develop hunting skills under adult supervision. For adults, this is a great time to enjoy family life and create beautiful memories. If we look at the statistics, we can clearly see the attraction of this activity in different states. Minnesota, with about 100,000 people participating in goose hunting each year, tops the list in terms of number of hunters. Illinois and Wisconsin are the next two states with large numbers of geese migrating through the area, attracting about 1,800,000 birds each year, respectively. Goose meat, although a popular traditional dish in some countries, in the United States, that is often not popular with the majority of people. The first main reason is the taste. Goose meat has a rich and fatty flavor, which is not suitable for the common taste of many Americans. According to a survey by the American Poultry Association, only about 10% of Americans choose to eat goose meat. To better understand this reason, we can study American culinary tastes. Chicken is the most popular meat, accounting for about 60% of total poultry meat consumption, according to research by the American Poultry Association. Pork and beef accounts for about 25% and 15% respectively.
In contrast, goose meat accounts for only 1%. Thus, it can be seen that chicken is a popular choice with a mild flavor suitable for American cuisine. The second reason why goose meat is not popular in the U.S. is cost. Goose meat has a high price, becoming a luxury dish. Price is a big barrier, making many Americans unable to afford an expensive dish like goose meat. Many people choose popular and more reasonably priced meats. According to a survey by the American Poultry Association, the average price of goose meat in the U.S. is about $20 per kilogram, much higher than chicken meat, about $4 per kilogram, and pork is literally $5 a kilogram. In addition, there are numbers of other reasons why goose meat is not popular in America. Goose meat can be high in cholesterol, which is a concern for health-conscious people. At the same time, some people may have an allergic reaction to goose meat, creating an additional risk when ingested. More detailed analysis by region in the U.S. shows that there are differences in the popularity of goose meat. The north and central regions often have a higher proportion of people consuming goose meat than the south and west regions. In the north, about 50% of people favor goose meat, while in the west, only about 5%. First, are you curious about the name of the baboon? Baboons, also known as racist monkeys, originate from Asia. In the U.S., the state of Florida is home to the largest number of baboons, due to individuals escaping from research facilities and experimental camps? Initially, their number in Florida was estimated at a few dozen, but has since increased to millions. Baboons have thick gray or brown fur with a red mark on the bottom. Their average weight is about 1725 pounds. They are aggressive animals and can be dangerous by attacking other species in the city, especially when they feel threatened or when stealing food. Their sharp fangs are about an inch long. Baboons breed usually in spring and summer when the weather is warm. Each time they reproduce, they usually give birth to one to three cubs. They are omnivores, their food includes fruits and small animals. They live in large herds. They have a clear hierarchy and follow the leadership of the alpha male. Baboons are highly adaptable to diverse habitats from jungles to grasslands and even urban areas They are attacking the city of Florida, roaming the main roads, causing traffic congestion. This not only affects the mobility of residents, but also delays public projects and businesses. They target traffic participants, especially car drivers, posing serious injury risks to them. Attacking vehicles on the road is either for food or due to their instinct to search for new habitats. However, the damage doesn't stop there. They boldly live on people's rooftops, 
damaging infrastructure and personal property. Invading homes to search for food causes significant losses to the local economy. Estimated annual damages in Florida amount to billions of USD, encompassing repair costs. This has sparked unease and worry within the community, negatively impacting people's mental well-being. Moreover, they not only pilfer food from human residences but also ravage food sources throughout the city. This behavior directly affects environmental hygiene, polluting water sources. It could lead to serious environmental and public health issues, further burdening government agencies and environmental protection organizations. To deal with this aggressive animal, Florida people have deployed hunting activities, Hunters often choose locations far from residential areas where baboons often visit, convenient for hunting. Before starting, local people often prepare large amounts of food such as tomatoes and oranges to attract baboons. Then, the hunter will prepare his bow and arrow. In Florida, hunters often use highly accurate bows and arrows to precisely target their prey. While hunting, hunters often choose well-covered locations to avoid being detected by baboons. They will wait until the baboons appear at a suitable distance before taking them down. The common bow used for baboon hunting is the compound bow, known for its accuracy and powerful shooting ability at distances of 20 to 30 feet. Hunters often aim at the head or neck area to take them down. Each hunting trip can catch from four to five baboons, depending on the hunter's skill and weather conditions. The use of bows and arrows is an effective measure to reduce the proliferation of baboons and protect the natural environment, as well as people's livelihoods. However, the use of pythons must be closely monitored to ensure that it does not adversely affect humans and the surrounding animal species. The issue of monkey invasions in the state of Florida remains a significant concern. Although control measures have been implemented, there are still large areas where they can roam freely and cause problems for the community. To address this issue, there needs to be close cooperation between government agencies, the public and environmental protection organizations. But I don't support the use of bows and arrows to control baboons. I believe this method is inhumane and harms them. What do you think about this approach? Comment one if you also disagree with the use of bows and arrows. In my opinion, methods such as sterilization or relocating them to wildlife conservation areas are more humane and sustainable approaches to addressing the issue. Besides addressing the risk to humans, we also need to consider the existence and rights of animal species, including baboons. Dealing with their invasion requires careful consideration of countermeasures while respecting their lives and freedom. Please comment on number one if you find this video interesting. Comment zero if you like Florida's response to invasive baboons. Thank you for watching the entire video. Like and subscribe to the channel to watch the next videos.
Hello friends, when you come to Australia, you will definitely have to learn about the customs of this continent. The kangaroo is the symbol of Australia. Appearing on the national flag and coat of arms, they are also considered a strong symbol because they only move forward. This animal is loved and considered a symbol of friendliness and closeness to humans. The distinctiveness of this culture can be clearly seen in most areas of Australia. However, in particularly rural areas, where there is a predominantly indigenous population, eating kangaroo meat is still more acceptable. The 2022 Australian Department of Agriculture and Water Resources survey indicates that around 10% of the Australian population actually consumes kangaroo meat. Notably, this rate is higher in rural areas compared to urban areas. The act of eating kangaroos is considered cruel and disrespectful to this animal. Kangaroos are typical marsupial, live naturally in their environment. Hunting kangaroos for meat is considered a violation of their habitat. Consuming the meat of an animal considered a national symbol and is considered incompatible with their values and their way of life. Although kangaroo meat is a highly nutritious food source with high protein, low fat and no cholesterol at all, for Australians it is not a popular food choice. This can be explained through many main reasons, focusing on the community's taste buds and culinary preferences. First, taste plays an important role in the direction to consume kangaroo meat. Interviews shows that this meat is described as having a rather bland taste and lacking a distinctive flavor, which may be one of the main reasons why do many Australians are not sympathetic to eating kangaroo meat. Hendra disease, caused by the Hendra virus, is a particularly dangerous respiratory infection that can lead to severe and even fatal illnesses. Hendra virus, an RNA virus belonging to the Paramyxoviridae family, is emerging as a significant risk to human health. Transmitted from kangaroos to humans through contact with nasal secretions, saliva, or feces of kangaroos. This virus is attracting concern from the medical community. Strong allergenic potential can appear in many forms, including rash, itching, swelling, difficulty of breathing, and can even lead to anaphylactic shock. In particular, endrovirus is also capable of causing food poisoning. Symptoms of food poisoning may include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and fever. This raises additional food safety and public health concerns. Furthermore, kangaroos play a positive role in maintaining the country's ecosystem. Kangaroos, being herbivores, 
contribute significantly to controlling plant populations in the wild. Their existence not only keeps the ecosystem balanced, but also creates a favorable habitat for many other species of animals and plants. Despite their important role in the ecosystem, but kangaroos are facing extinction. The Australian government has recognized the importance of protecting kangaroos and has taken specific measures to ensure the survival of these animals. Placing kangaroos on the endangered species list is an important step to increase attention and care. Protection measures include maintaining and conserving their natural habitat, reducing pressure from risk factors such as habitat loss and exposure to competitors. So since these solutions have been affecting and preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.